And I'd probably bring this bass up to a mixer track and just EQ out that high end because that's not really what I'm looking for. Alright, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Q. I'm back again with another video for you guys. So if you've been paying attention to my social media, you see that I just rebranded my name to my real name, which is Quentin Bobbitt. So can we get an RIP to Q in the chat? Cause that man is gone. But anyways, it's not too much of a big deal now. I'm just at Quentin Bobbitt on pretty much everything. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, everything. Snapchat, if you want to add me there. YouTube's Quentin Bobbitt. Everything's my real name now. But I still go by Q, just not KYU anymore. It'll be the letter Q. All right, but let's get into the video. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some like beginner melody tricks. I'm gonna be showing you guys three different ways to easily create melodies. And I know you've heard me say this before, but I don't wanna talk your ear off. So let's just get right into the video. All right, so I got this Omnisphere patch pulled up and I'm just gonna go into Omnisphere, go to the Keyscape library. And I'm just gonna pull up the LAC7 softest right here. You can literally use FL keys for this. It doesn't matter what piano you're using. But let's get right into the first technique. So I'm gonna go to the piano roll you guys have seen me use this before. I know I've talked about it in my videos, but it's when you go to this little arrow right here, go to helpers, scale highlighting, and you have all these different scales right here. So you have the key, the root note, which is the key on the side. And then you have this the scale over here, which could be major, minor natural, minor melodic, all these different things. So basically what you do is if you use right click, you can go through and just switch all these. You can do whatever you want. So say example, we want to do C minor. Boom, right here. And what it does is it blacks out all the keys that are not in the scale. So the keys in this scale would be C, D, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, A sharp, and back to C. So this is your scale right here. And as you can see, any note that is not in the scale will be blacked out. So like C sharp, that's not a C minor note. And basically, if you want to make a melody like this, the root note is C. So for the most part, you're always going to want to start at that C note. And if you want to make a triad, which is just three notes to make a chord, all you got to do is start at C, the root note, skip one note in the scale. So this would be D, but you're not counting the black notes. So you'd skip D because it's one note in the scale and go to D sharp. Boom. Then you'd skip another note, F, and go right to G. So this is minor C triad chord. And it sounds like that. And then if you wanted to get a progression going, you would do literally the same thing. Just make sure you start at C. And then after this, you could make the next note, whatever you want. For example, say I wanted to go up to D. Boom, we'll do the same thing. Skip one note in the scale. Skip another note in the scale. Boom, we got our D minor triad that falls in the C minor scale. And if you play that, it should sound good for the most part. But you might have to play with it, tweak it until you get something that you like how it sounds. Well, that actually does not sound too good. So what this would be called, I believe, is a diminished chord, which is a chord that really doesn't fit in the C minor scale, but it still works. So you can use it to kind of create a lot of tension. But for example, if I wanted to sound more like smooth, we just choose a different note. So if I just bring it up to this D sharp, make sure all the notes are in the scale again. Like this, that should sound a lot better. Boom. So yeah, this is tip number one using the scale highlighting. The next thing I want to show you guys is actually this stamp tool right here. And all you do is you click this stamp and what it does is so for example, what it does is you click the stamp and it basically makes scales for you. So if you want a natural minor scale, you click natural minor. And for example, say we want C minor, it'll just make a stamp and have all the keys in it as before. As you can see, I still have the scale highlighting on. So you can see that this stamp is C minor and it's falling in all of the notes that are not blacked out. But you can do whatever key you want. If you want to go to G minor, grab the stamp tool again, go to minor, boom, G minor. And what you would do is as long as you have goats, as long as you have ghost notes enabled in FL and you do this by going here, helpers, ghost notes, and turn that on. So you would make uh, one patch of Omnisphere or whatever plugin you're using. You would turn the volume all the way down, duplicate it. Let's clone it. Then you go into this new one and you use the ghost notes from before as your scale. So for example, if we want to make a G chord, same exact thing as before. Let's turn the volume up on this other one. Boom. Skip one note in scale. Go to the A sharp. Skip another note in scale. B. Boom. There's our triad. Bring that down because it's a little too high. Yeah, for example, if you need the scale to get a little bigger, all you do is just do this. Hit shift and click on, the, on one note. And you can bring it down and just keep doing this. So you make the scale as big as it can be. 
yeah, that is the stamp method. And the next thing we're gonna go into is something probably a little more complicated, but at the same time, it's, it definitely helps you a lot learning music theory. What we're gonna do is delete this extra patch of Omnisphere, and we're gonna go in here and just delete this scale. And then we're gonna make sure the volume's back up. And we're gonna go to the scale, uh, the we're gonna go to the helpers, go to scale highlighting, and I'm just gonna put it back to black notes just so it's normal. And so here's what the trick is. So for example, say we want a C minor scale. So go to C, and for the most part, when you follow these steps, no matter what, you'll either make a minor or a major chord. So if we go to C and go to the root note, and we skip two notes in between, go to this D sharp, so there's two notes in between. And then from this note right here, the D sharp, skip three notes and go to the G. And there's your C minor chord. And you could do this with literally every single note and it'll make a minor chord. For example, if we go to D, skip two, Go to F, skip one, two, three, go to A. Now we have a D chord. And if you want to make it major, bring this middle note up because now what you have is three notes that were skipped in between and two up here. And watch, now this is a major, this is a D major chord. Yeah, that is the last trick that I'm going to show you guys. But what we're going to do now is just make a melody with the first one that I showed you by using the scale highlighting. So I'm just going to go to... I'm going to select a minor natural and we're going to go to D sharp minor. I'm just going to make a little progression right here. So I'm going to bring the BPM up to 163 and something you don't want to do, for example, so I'll make a chord right here, a little triad. Something you don't want to do is so each one of these is a bar. If you follow the black lines, so you got bar one, bar two, bar three and bar four. Something you don't want to do for the most part. I mean, you still can do it. I feel like it's kind of like that Metro Boomin type beat where like you just have the chords go like this. Each bar, they change up. But it's a little too boring. So I'm going to show you guys a progression that I've been doing that's really fun to do and super easy and it always sounds good. What you'll do is just have the first chord look like this. Go to the second chord. Let's have it go up to F. Make sure everything's in scale. Let's make sure this sounds good. I'm actually going to bring it up F sharp. And the metronome on let's see where we want to go for the next chord i'm thinking down maybe to c sharp and you can just duplicate this over twice and i'm thinking for this last chord maybe have it go up to actually what we could do instead of bringing it up just duplicate this middle note up So I like that a lot, but one thing I notice is it kind of sounds a little too like basic. So one thing you can do is bring the roots. Uh, you can select the root notes. I'm selecting all of them here, and you just shift click on your keyboard. Boom! This duplicates it, and then hit Control Down Arrow, and it'll bring it down an octave. This will make a bass note, which it'll it'll just fill the piano out a little bit more. Bring this down, everything down an octave. I like how this sounds, but I think it's a little too low. And if it's up an octave, I think it's a little too high. So what you could do is hit shift and up arrow, and this will change the key. So let's go up to, yeah, let's go up to G, see how this sounds. So now I'm going to go to the scale highlighting, because I like how that sounds. And we're going to change the scale back to G minor, because that's what our key is in now. So yeah, the only next thing I would do is just duplicate this over, so it's an 8-bar loop. And then I wasn't really going for a piano melody here, but I was just using it to get the basis of the chord progression down. So maybe now I'd go into like my one-shot kits, find something that sounds good, find maybe like a pluck. Sounds pretty cool. So we'll mute that Omnisphere, because we don't want the piano anymore. Just highlight the pattern over to the pluck. Let's see how it sounds. Yeah, so there we go. And then you can just stack this with more stuff. Or, for example, you could add a lead. So we're going to go into the envelope settings and do the same thing as before, just so it only plays for as long as the note is. And we can just make a cool little top melody up on top. Yeah, so I like that, so I'll just duplicate that over twice.
And one thing, I don't really like how slowly the lead comes in, so I could adjust this. I could adjust this knob right here and we'll adjust like the start of it. That this sounds. Then I might want to adjust the attack just a tiny bit, just so there's no like clicking right in the beginning. And I mean, that's pretty much the whole melody right there. Maybe I would add like a bass next. And all we're going to do is follow the root note. Duplicate that over and bring it up. And I'd probably bring this bass up to a mixer track and just EQ out that high end because that's not really what I'm looking for. Yeah, and that is three melody tricks, just easy ways to make melodies, really simple beginner ways. But I feel like if you keep doing these over and over again, once you just keep doing it, it will get a lot better at music theory and eventually this becomes second nature for you. But yeah, that is it for the video. I hope you guys are enjoying these ones, these kind of like shorter videos where I just, I teach you like something small. I don't really got to do the drums. Of course, there's going to be more videos of me doing drums in the future. But for right now, I've kind of been enjoying making these a little bit more simple and easy for everyone to watch. But like I said, that is the video. So if you guys did enjoy this one, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe. And of course, follow me on social media. You know my new at, at Quentin Bobbitt. I'll always have my links in the description. So if you need anything there, you know where to go. Drum kits are on drum Com. I have my own website that I'm making soon. I just canceled my subscription to BeatStars because I'm not going to be using that anymore. Although the link will still be down there because the drum kits are still up on that website. But after this month, they should be down. But yeah, that is all I got for you guys. So if you enjoyed this one, be sure to tune in for the next one because it's always going to be better. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.